Hey guys, welcome to another video from Overbike Gaming. Uh, today I thought I'd have a little bit of a talky video. Um, over the last, you know, few weeks I've been playing a lot of games that would be considered difficult or downright hard. Uh, starting with Sifu and then of course Elden Ring. And then uh, my friend Bungle actually picked me up uh, Ghosts and Goblins Remastered. Uh, another balls hard game, but uh, no surprise there, seeing as the original was also very difficult indeed. And I, I've, been, so I've been thinking about them. And I'm not normally one for difficult games. I've made that perfectly clear in the past. I play most games on the easiest setting. Uh, I'm more interested in the story than like any challenging gameplay. I'd like good gameplay, but not necessarily challenging gameplay. But over the last, you know, little while, I've played a few games that, while difficult, have managed to keep me engaged and interested. Uh, Sifu is a good example, obviously, uh, where the combat is just so damn fun that even if you get killed, you don't really mind having to do it again. And this is a uh, opinion that has been echoed by another friend of mine that also played it. In Yes, it's difficult, but it's fun. Uh, so you don't really mind too much. And then, of course, Elden Ring, uh, which is also difficult. But with Elden Ring, as I mentioned in my first impressions, I, it doesn't have the wall face meeting compatibility that a lot of the uh, the Souls games do. So you don't just go to one place and then here's your boss and you must kill him and fight him and before you can proceed. Uh, you do have other things to do. I mean, for instance, I have now killed the initial boss. Thank you very much. It, I did it on my third try and I'm quite pleased with myself. Uh, my head is now officially the largest on the planet. <laughs> uh, so, I continue going from the castle, and then I start getting fucked up on these little walkways where I don't have enough room to maneuver, and I, like, roll off of it all the time. So I was like, arr, arr. So I just turned around and went the other way. Went, went down a spire, I think it's the Weeping Spire. You know, killed, killed another boss I found there. Just like a sub mini sub-boss, I think it's like the Night Crusader, or the Night Store, or something like that. Um... And now I'm exploring a different castle down there with all these bloody harpies that seem to pounce at all exactly the same time, which makes evading them tricky. Or very easy, depending on your luck. And I'm still having fun with it. In fact, I'm probably going to play it as soon as I finish uh, putting this video together. So it is a game that is holding me so much longer than certainly previous Dark Souls releases, where I'd push and meet resistance and I'd just be like, Fuck it, I'll just do something else. Uh, but in Elden Ring, you push, you meet resistance, you just turn. I, I think that that's the best way I can make, you just turn. So I like those two games, even though they're difficult. They allow, either they're fun enough in their gameplay to uh, absolutely keep you playing, which, see uh, or you have other options, ways of going around or, you know, along the side of a difficulty spike. Uh, as in Elden Ring. And Elden Ring is a very good game. And I'm not saying gameplay in Elden Ring shit. It's it's not. I'm actually really enjoying the fuck out of it. And I'm I'm starting to understand it now as well. Which is something I never really did with the previous Souls games. Because uh, what From Software are very... Well, very good and very bad at doing is telling a story. In that it's really dribs and drabs for a lot of the gameplay. And you need to go some... And then you sort of start to get it. And I'm starting to get it. So, yeah, it's keeping me interested in that fashion as well. And then we have Ghosts and Goblins. Uh, remastered, I should say. I have played the original via emulation, and that was balls hard. I think I actually had it on the Spectrum back in the day, because I'm an old man, and I had things on cassette tapes that turned into video games. It's amazing. Um, so, yeah, I played it back in the day. I remember it being very difficult, and... I played remaster, it's very difficult, but it, with all respect to Bungle, who bought me off it, and very kindly did so, uh, I'm not really Jones in the play it again. I'm really not. It's just... I don't know why. I mean, it's not a bad game. I mean, the, the original wasn't a bad game, and it's basically that, uh, with some souped-up graphics, and um, there's some more pathway sort of stuff, so you can choose where you're going. Because I don't recall the first one had that. There is like an easy mode on it. Uh, where you have infinite lives. But you're still dying all the damn time. You're like, Jesus Christ. I've died like 20 times killing this boss. 
What would have happened if I'd played it like on anything but stupid baby mode? Yeah, you would you would not have gotten by the boss. Obviously. I don't know whether it's because of the respawning enemies. That is that there's always something I've never really liked in games where enemies respawn. Now in Dark Souls games and Elden Ring, obviously the enemies respawn apart from the bosses when you rest. And I'm okay with that, because I know that's happening, so that that's fine. Okay, if I rest, this is going to happen. Okay. Uh, I need to rest, though. I'll do it. Um, and it also gives you the ability to, to farm them. Like, um, I finally got, like, a 100% physical blocking shield. I'm not strong enough to carry it, but I have it, so I'm working up my strength. Uh, so that's fine, but in games like Ghosts and Goblins, it's just like... Okay, they're just going to spawn off screen and come in. And it's already a hard game. And when you've got a clear area of the screen that you're just traversing and something bops on from the off, from off screen and, and kills you, it's just kind of like... Yeah. There's no real... I don't want to say downtime, because downtime's not really what I mean. But like in Sifu, when you've cleared a room of bad guys, more bad guys don't come in. You know, you, you've... You can take a breath, you can reset yourself, and then move on to the next challenge. Uh, it's Elden Ring. Uh, if you clear area of enemies, you, well, hey, your, your health potions fill up, which is a nice bonus for Elden Ring, so well done for that. But um, you're not immediately set upon by something else. You don't, you're not being hurried along all of the time because you know the enemies are going to come back and try and kill you again. Which is something I really hate in games, and I think it, it's just an... Uh, I understand why it's in there for Ghosts and Goblins. Because back in the day, I don't want to like sound like a gameplay was shit back in the day, but it was a bit clunkier, I think. I think we can all agree with that. It hadn't been like, and had the rough edges smoothed off. It was perfectly playable and everything, but uh, I felt like the controls weren't as responsive as you might want them to be in a game that difficult with that platforming. I'm sure there are others out there that had no problems with it, and I'm just shit at that sort of thing, because I am shit at platformers and difficult games, so it's a double whammy for me. I've kind of lost track of where I was going with that. <laughs> but I think the, the, the respawning of enemies so quickly is, is just a way of like artificially hardening the game, even if the game's already hard, which Ghosts and Goblins is, or at least I find it to be. But it is, it is a decent remaster, so I shouldn't really be shocked. I mean, it is part of what makes Ghosts and Goblins Ghosts and Goblins. That it, it does that, and it's it's not certainly not the only game from its time that, that would do that. Or even games, you know, nowadays you have games that respawn stuff. Uh, not a fan of it, because I just... It never gives you that sort of time to take a breath. You're always, like, hurrying because you know you have to move before it respawns again, and then you, you have to fight it again, and then you have to get... Ugh. It's just not the way I like to game. Just always with this foot on the back of your neck driving you forward, which may be a disturbing look into my social life, in fairness. But... <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Let me know down below what you guys think, because... Difficult games have always been something I've I've always sort of stayed away from, low key. I mean, I have done. I mean, we reviewed Bloodborne in the past. I know Snare and I had very different takes on that, and I liked it more. But I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, after we reviewed it, I didn't play it for much longer. I, I, I kind of got bombed out on it, and uh, Elden Ring certainly hasn't been that. I mean, okay, I've not produced a full review because my God, it's a big game. And I certainly haven't even got my head around a lot of the mechanics of it, let alone like being able to review it as a game. So the first impressions is going to be a lot for at least a while, if not forever. Because I imagine by the time I actually get to the point where I feel I can review it, it will be, uh, it will be dust in the wind, dude. You know, it'll just be in the rearview mirror and we'll be looking at other stuff. But yeah, difficult games. What's your take? I'm really ambivalent about them. I think I think I'm going to give more of them uh, a look in future. I'm not going to be as put off because, as I said, I, the positive experiences with Sifu and Elden Ring uh, have, have basically said, 
yeah, okay, I, I can... I can deal with difficult games. I mean, I completed Sifu, and you know, I'm getting there <laughs> on Elden Ring. What's, what's the meme? And I'm getting good. Get good. That's what I'm doing. Anyway, guys, let me know down below about games that perhaps are a little bit difficult that you might recommend for me that I would have fun with. So, just because, just you know, misery. Misery, misery, misery. Love it. Uh, never be the old misery. Anyway, guys, that's all for this week. I'll catch you next time.